Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will talk about motion in space or what we also call curvilinear motion. This is analogous to rectilinear motion or motion in the two-dimensional plane which you have learned in Math 21. But this time, we apply the concepts that we learned about the calculus of vector functions to describe the motion of a particle in the three-dimensional space. This is the last topic for Math 22. This lecture will be given in two parts. In this first video, we use vector functions to describe the position at any given time of a particle moving in the three-dimensional space and obtain its velocity and acceleration at any given time. In the second video, we look deeper into the acceleration and try to explain a phenomena we experience when riding a vehicle that moves along a curve. So let's begin. Imagine a particle or a point moving in the three-dimensional space. Let r of t be a vector in the position representation such that its terminal point is the position of the particle at any given time t. So for example, at t equals 0, r of 0 is a vector in the position representation whose terminal point is the starting point of the particle that moves in space. Since the vector function r of t gives us the position of the particle, we call this the position function, the object. As the object or the particle moves from t equals a to t equals b, its path traces a curve on the three-dimensional space. And hence, the distance it has traveled is the length of this arc that it traces from t equals a to t equals b. In the formula for an arc length for a curve in space, this is the integral from a to b of r, the norm of r prime of t dt. And the displacement is a vector r of b minus r of a. Or in short, this is the vector from the ter terminal point minus the initial point. We can also describe the average speed of the particle as it moves from the interval t to t plus delta t. And this is the change in the distance over the change in time. Or the formula s of t plus delta t minus s of t all over delta t. And the instantaneous speed of this particle is given as v of t to be the limit of the average speed as the time interval delta t approaches zero. And we know this to be the derivative of s with respect to t, or simply the norm of r prime of t. The average velocity of the particle as it moves from the interval t to t plus delta t is the vector function r of t plus delta t minus r of t all over delta t. Or in other words, this is the displacement of the particle as it moves from time t to t plus delta t all over the change in time. And the instantaneous velocity is given by the vector function v of t to be the limit of the average velocity. And this is just a formula for the derivative of the vector function r with respect to t. Take note that speed is a scalar while velocity is a vector. We also describe the instantaneous acceleration of this particle to be the vector a of t, which is the limit of the change in velocity over the change in time as the change in time approaches zero. Now this is just the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. But since the velocity is the derivative of the position function r, we can also describe the acceleration as the second derivative of the position function with respect to time. To summarize, for a position function r of t, its distance is given by the integral of the norm of r prime of t dt from t equals a to t equals b. And the instantaneous speed is just the norm of r prime of t dt. Again, the distance and speed are scalar quantities.
Well, the displacement is the terminal position minus the initial position. And the instantaneous velocity is the first derivative of the position function. And the instantaneous acceleration is the first derivative of the velocity function or the second derivative of the position function. Do take note that the displacement, velocity, and acceleration are vector functions. So to understand these concepts better, let's do some examples. For the first example, let us consider an object moving in space according to the position function r of t equals cosine t sine t zero. Now note that the third component is zero, so we can think of this particle as moving in the xy plane. We want to determine the velocity and acceleration of the, this object at time t equals pi and the distance it has traveled from t equals pi to 3, t equals 3 pi. Since we want the velocity and acceleration, first we compute the velocity function and the acceleration function at any given time t. We know that the velocity function is the derivative of the position function with respect to t. Hence, v of t is r prime of t, which is the derivative of cosine of t is negative sine t, derivative of sine t is cosine t. Hence, v of t is negative sine t, cosine t, zero. Moreover, we know that the acceleration is just the first derivative of the velocity function. Hence, differentiating the velocity function with respect to t, we have derivative of negative sine t is negative cosine t. The derivative of cosine t is negative sine t, zero. Now we have the velocity and acceleration at any given time t. But we want the velocity and acceleration at time t equals pi. Hence, we just evaluate the velocity and acceleration functions at t equals pi, which gives us the velocity v of pi to be negative sine pi cosine pi 0, which is 0, negative 1, 0. And the acceleration at t equals pi is a of pi which is given by negative cosine pi, negative sine pi, zero, or the vector one, zero, zero. Also, we are asked the distance that the, this particle has traveled from t equals pi to three, t equals three pi. So we know that the distance is given by the formula integral from pi to three pi of the norm of r prime of t. Since we have already computed for r prime of t, we just get the norm of this vector, negative sine t cosine t zero, which is the square root of sine squared t plus cosine squared t. So this quantity is the norm of r prime of t. Now we know that sine squared t plus cosine squared t equals one. So therefore, this integral is just equal to the integral from pi to three pi of one dt. This integral is equal to t evaluated from pi to 3 pi. And t evaluated from pi to 3 pi is just 3 pi minus pi or 2 pi. Therefore, the object has traveled a distance of 2 pi units as it goes from t equals pi to t equals 3 pi. Okay, let's do another example. This time, consider an object that moves in the three-dimensional space with position function r of t equals 4 cosine t, 4 sine t, 3 t. We are asked to find three things. First, its speed at any time. We know that the speed is just the derivative of the distance with respect to time, or the norm of r prime of t. Hence, we first compute for r prime of t, which is the derivative of the position function r of t. So this is the derivative of 4 cosine t with respect to t, is negative 4 sine t. The derivative of 4 sine t with respect to t is 4 cosine t. And the derivative of 3t with respect to t is 3. So this vector is r prime of t. Now taking the norm of r prime of t, we have square root of 16 sine squared t plus 16 cosine squared t plus 3 squared is 9. But 
we know that 16 sine squared t plus 16 cosine squared t is just equal to 16. Hence, this whole quantity is just equal to 16 plus 9, which is 25. Therefore, the speed is just a square root of 25 or 5. Take note that this is speed, not velocity, so it should be a scalar. Next, we are asked to find the distance that the particle has traveled from t equals 0 to t equals 5. Again, we know that the distance function is given by the integral from 0 to pi of the norm of r prime of t dt. Now, we have already computed the norm of r prime of t from the first problem, which is equal to 5. Therefore, this is equal to the integral from 0 to pi of 5 dt, which is equal to 5t evaluated from 0 to pi, or 5 pi. Finally, we are asked for the displacement from t equals 0 to t equals 5. So we know that the displacement is just the difference from the terminal position minus the initial position. Hence, we just evaluate the position function at t equals pi minus the value of the vector function at t equals 0. So at t equals pi, we have 4 cosine pi, which is negative 4, 4 sine pi is 0, and 3 pi. And when t equals 0, we have 4 cosine 0, which is 4, 4 sine 0 is 0, and 3 times 0 is 0. Hence, the displacement is just this vector minus this vector, or the vector negative 8, 0, 3 pi. Notice that the distance is a scalar quantity, and the displacement is a vector quantity. Now let us move on to our third example. Suppose that the velocity of a moving object at any time t is given by the vector function v of t equals 1, 2t, 3t squared. Now let us find the position of the object at t equals 3, given that at t equals 1, its position is at the point negative 1, 2, 3. So here, unlike the previous two examples, here we are given the velocity function and now we are asked to find the position function. Since we know that the velocity is the derivative of the position function, how do you think can we recover the position function given the velocity? Yes, we have to take the antiderivative of the velocity function to get the position function. That is, r of t is equal to the integral of the velocity function 1, 2t, 3t squared with respect to t. So taking the integral, we have integral of 1 is t plus a constant c1, then the integral of 2t is actually t squared plus a constant c2, and the integral of 3t squared is actually t cubed plus a constant c3. Now, we want to know what are these constants c1, c2, and c3. To do that, we use the fact that when t equals 1, the position of the particle is negative 1, 2, 3. This means that r of 1 is the vector negative 1, 2, 3. Hence, when t equals 1, we can substitute 1 for t in this position function. So we have r of 1 is equal to 1 plus c1, 1 squared plus c2, 1 cubed plus c3. But since r of 1 is equal to negative 1, 2, 3, we can equate these two vectors together. Hence, 1 plus c1 is equal to negative 1, 1 plus c2 is equal to 2, and 1 plus c3 equals 3. Solving for c1 and c2 and c3, we have c1 is negative 2, c2 is 1, and c3 is 2. Therefore, the position function is t minus 2, t squared plus 1, t cubed plus 2. What we actually did here is that we have computed for the position function for any given time t. Finally, the problem asks for the position of the object at t equals 3. Now that we have the position function at any time t, we can just evaluate r of t at t equals 3. And hence, r of 3 is 3 minus 2, which is 1, 3 squared plus 1 equals 10, and 3 cubed plus 2 is 29. 
seconds, the object is at the point 1, 10, 29, when t equals 3. This actually ends the first part of this lecture. Please make sure to watch the second part where we discuss more about the acceleration. And thank you all for listening.